أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بيد بركة سيدي شيخ سيدي محمد فوز الكركري قدس الله وصرة Notes from a Mudagara from May 2022. Before starting this video, I would like to say that this work would never have seen the light without Sidi Shaykh. If something is wrong, it will be from myself, and everything that is correct is from Sidi Shaykh. In this part of the lecture, Sidi Shaykh said that the knowledge of God, Ma'rifah, is not a cynicism, so it's not a patched cloak, Kharqa, nor is it Atikaf and distancing oneself from the world. From the dunya. Asceticism is a separate station, and the person who practices it is called an ascetic, not an hour of God, not Arif Billah, because he has renounced worldly life. Also, knowledge of God is not about worship, ibadah. It's not about spending all night in prayer, qiyam, and fasting all day. Someone who does these things is called a worshipper, abd, not an hour of God, Arif. He may spend years in worship until Allah establishes this station of worship in his heart, and only then is he called a worshipper, Abd. As for the knower of God, Al Arif Billah, he may only fulfill the obligatory acts of worship and he has knowledge. So one should know why he has come. If he came for asceticism, it will be a veil for him and an obstacle between him and the knowledge of God, and he will remain with the patched cloak, Al Kharqa. And the rosary as subha for his entire life. This person has only worked on two foundations of the path. Does this mean denying the pashid cloak at the rosary? No, but they should be seen as tools, as this person struggles with an illness called the love of the world, Hubbud Dunya. So when one wears them, it's to empty and purify his soul, his heart, and his intellect from this lower inclination, as he wants the higher and the nobler. Speaking about the Pashid cloak, Sidi Shaykh added that it's like reviving a sunnah, which was first practiced by Sayyidina Adam salam, when he descended from the higher to the lower and realized his nakedness, so Adam, he felt the regret for his actions as he had transgressed against himself by eating from the tree. One might analyze and say that he did not practice this sin. In reality, he did. Speaking to disciples, Sidi Shaykh said, Adam only did it because you have done it yourselves. Sri Sheikh added, What's your eater from the tree? You ate from the property of the orphan. Sri Sheikh then referred to the birds. Did he not find you an orphan and give you refuge? He explained that the orphan refers to the Prophet and the property of the orphan, Melul Yatim, is his sunnah. The disciple ate from this sunnah with his desires, engaging in actions that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited and neglecting what he ordered. That's what caused the appearance of his body image. This body, at the beginning of Waytharim, at the beginning of Suluk, is a sin, Masiya. As for the middle and end of Waytharim, this body becomes a pride, Mafkhara, and a preserved table, Lawh Mahfur. In the beginning of Waytharim, seeing his own body and self is a disaster for the disciple. He should seek to absent himself from this image and not stay delimited by it. One might ask, how? What's the solution? He should return to the practice of his father in the physical image, which is Adam alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the first prophet in terms of reality, and Adam is the first prophet in terms of physical image. So one should seek his relationship with Adam as he already lost his connection with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam by eating from his property. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is the giver and I'm the distributor, Al-Qasim. So what the solution for someone who ate his share and others share? He should examine himself and try to absent himself from this sin. It's only his sin. No one else has shared with him. The only one who partakes in this sin is the tabut with his whispers, waswasa. If he admits to this sin and returns it to himself and to the shaitan, he frees himself from others 
He no longer shifts blame onto others for his mistakes. He stops blaming his parents, siblings, or friends. Sidi Sheikh added that the first thing that the disciple learns is how to free himself from those around him and stay in discussion with himself. It's a confession and an acknowledgement that he transgressed against himself and that no one has caused this to him. He does not blame society, his social situation, even if there is a war in his country. He does not blame the, the situation of his country. It's only about him, his body, from the head to the foot. To ease his conscience, he includes his qareen, or accompanying devil. This qareen is likened to a piece of tissue used to cleanse his sins. So he may say, I did not do anything wrong. It's him who influenced me, leading me into this sin. This is just to comfort himself and to have an aspiration, a himma, for worship. But in reality, it's about him, not the Qareel. It's the disciple who has the word Anna in him. And how he removes this Anna? It's not by removing the Alif and the Nur, but by removing the entirety of the body. Sidi Shaykh added that whoever kills a soul, it's like he killed all the humanity. So when he kills himself, everything adds. People add, and he frees himself from everything. There is sweetness in this matter. This is what a Sufi experiences at the beginning of the journey. He wanders on foot while singing, etc. He is immersed in all the foundations of soul. The seven foundations flow into his heart without being imposed on him by the shaykh. He comes to love the patched cloak because it was his father's Adam Garner when he ate from the tree and used its leaves to cover himself. So that was all for this video. Alhamdulillah, الذي هدانا لهذا وعقلنا لنهتج له لأهداء الله. لقد جاءت رسول ربنا بالحق. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم لعالمين إنك حميد مجيد. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسيكون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين